Hello everybody, welcome back to the Collector's Outpost, and today we're going to take a look at the Death Watch Mandalorian, which is uh, one of my favorites of all the Mandalorians out there. I don't know if it's the colors or what it is, uh, but he just looks so damn cool. Now, if you watch the show Mandalorian, you'll know that Din Djarin was a little boy uh, in a town, and the town comes under attack by droids. Then a group of Mandalorians, known as the Death Watch, comes in to take out the droids and save him. It's super cool that Hot Toys came around and made one of these Death Watch figures. Um, I do wish they'd put a couple of the other characters that I really want out, um, like Bill Burr, because <laughs> he was fantastic in that show. And Cara Dune would be awesome, but I know that's never going to happen, I think, for either of them. However, it's super cool that they put out one of these Death Watch figures, because I get to build up uh, the Mandalorian set that I have. And I know they also recently announced that they'll be putting out some more of the Mandalorian, such as Bo-Katan and her little crew. So I can't wait to get my hands on those and just build up my little army of Mandalorians. Alright, let's get them out of the box and take a peek at everything he comes with. Before we dig down, I just want to take a peek at this image, because this is such a cool image on the inside here he is death watch mandalorian now you'll see he doesn't come with a whole lot of accessories there's a few hands there's a lake plate replacement in case you want to swap one of those out and we've got the rocket pack flames uh which is done always very well i just wish they had leds in there um and you got the rocket pack and two blasters and here's hot toys thinking out of the box giving us the same exact sand stands as pretty much half the figures that come from Star Wars. So, thumbs up to Hot Toys. Alright, let's take a close look. We have the uh, leg plate armor, which has a lot of dirt and grease, some good weathering applications there. And if you have two of these figures, for whatever reason, you can always just swap out the plate and give each one their own variation. Um, the hands are always done really well. You know, there's a little bit of uh, weathering, some grease and dirt kind of in the nooks and crannies there. Let's move over to the rocket blasters. So I always think these look great, and they do. I just wish that they could figure out a way to, in the rocket pack, put a nice, powerful LED to light them up. And here we got the rocket pack. And I know they could fit an LED light and a little battery in here to kind of just light up those little fire flames at the bottom. Anyway, the paint application on this is fantastic. It looks like it could be some sponge work and some dry brushing. Uh, they've got like these little dings and these little cracks in there, some fine details. They did a great job on that. And they didn't even skim on the back too. They even put some weathering and everything on the back, even though we're not going to see it. So I love how they make these things. They make them super simple to connect. On the back of his pleather vest, you'll see two magnets sewed in and it just clicks right on. Simple as that. So let's get him in a quick flight pose. Uh, I've got to tell you, I absolutely love him. Look at that. That is incredible, some great colors, great detail. And I wound up just getting him uh, because I just wanted to get a few more Mandalorians and whatever they put out, I was just gonna grab and put him on the display, but I didn't realize I was gonna like this guy so much. I honestly don't know if it's the coloring that's just attracting my eye or the contrast between uh, the, the, the blues and the silvers and the brown, I, I don't know what it is, but I just love this figure. And the crazy thing is, there's absolutely nothing special about it. There's no crazy paint job on the armor like with Sabine, if you've watched the Rebels, or even something like Bo-Katan's helmet, which is really cool. This is just simple paint, kind of like the original Boba Fett in a way. So you know, the one thing I don't understand what Hot Toys is doing is that the Mandalorian has a brown undersuit, but yet they gave us a gray one. So here is the Death Watch Mandalorian with a brown undersuit. So we know they have the ability to dye these little suits brown, so I'm not really sure what the deal is with the Mandalorian, uh, but they'll give us this one in the brown suit. Anyway, let's take a look at some of this paintwork here because it's done so well. We've got this cool base color, that aqua kind of color, uh, and then we've got some weathering and maybe like a little bit of a purple wash around some of the edges to really make the details pop out and give it some depth. You can really see the color variations and the shadowing that gives it so much depth, especially on the helmet right around the rim. And of course, on the rocket pack, we've got some great dry brushing and I don't know, maybe some sponging too, maybe in there. But they did some great detailing in there without going over the top. So down by the boots, we've got some really good paint work with mud and trying to age it a little bit and give it some weathering like he's been fighting in the mud all day. They, it is pleather, so I do worry about that with posing over time. And it's not that half boot cut either. 
I don't know why they just don't stick to that because that's really a great design over having these boots made out of pleather. I'd rather them sculpt it in so that they last a long time. Now up around the knees, we've got some great weathering as well around the knee plates there and the, the blaster slash rocket launcher, whatever you want to call that, that we've seen Boba Fett now use in the Book of Boba Fett a couple of times. And I believe I saw a scene where Mando used it. Moving on up to the holsters, this is a full uh, pleather piece. It's not sculpted. I do worry over time about these things just disintegrating because they're such thin pieces of pleather. And on the helmet here, you can see all the great paintwork. Uh, we have the nice aqua that kind of fades into dirt and grime around the edges with some shadowing. Uh, underneath the cheekbones there, you can see a nice shiny kind of silver. It's adding a really nice contrast between the shadows and the highlights between that kind of pale purple uh, around the rim and the aqua from the rest of the helmet. All right, before we get everything wrapped up, let's get him into one more flight pose where he's kind of in like mid-battle in the air, trying to destroy all the droids down below that are attacking the town so he can get down there and save Din Djarin. Being such a Mandalorian fan, I kind of went a little crazy and bought a helmet to match most of the Mandalorian figures I have. If I had a ton more space, I'd get a lot more helmets because these things are really cool. Thank you all so much again for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little bell down below and I'll see you all in the next video.